if he was somebody other than Trump, he would be in custody right now. I mean, Kevin, the yes, whole idea... Yes, that's a really important point, and everyone needs to remember that. Yeah, it is an important <laughs> point. Um, Kevin, you know, just, again, I'm across the pond at the moment, but I love America, and I, this is no, you the don't. whole idea that we're even discussing the possibility of incarcerating an American president. I made the point the other day that if it was for running an illegal drone program that killed thousands of innocent people, or it was wholesale corruption on a very serious scale at the heart of government, you know, something of that magnitude, then OK, I'd understand taking action against an American president. But the idea that Trump is going through all this and may end up with a suspended sentence or a hung sentence hanging over him, whatever it may be, as Mark just articulated, the idea that an American president, left or right, is facing this, potentially happening in six weeks' time, in election year, I mean, it, it sends a, sh a shudder down my spine, if I'm honest, because I don't know what it makes America as a country. Well, it's, it has never happened before in a G7 country. It happened once, I believe, in a G20 country, but I think was acquitted. You're, this isn't really about Trump anymore uh, from the perspective you're talking about. It's about the American brand. It's about the executive. It's about the White House. Yeah. It's about the American economy. It's about people's perception about investing in it. There's a pretty big discomfort, and I know this from both Democrats and Republicans. Um, may, there's many uh, outcomes of this sentencing, but I don't think anybody contemplates that he would be jailed. That would not go over well, I, I think, at all. It, from just a, um, I, I don't think that would be. This judge has a huge responsibility on his shoulders because it hasn't been tested by the appellate court, so it would be wise, perhaps. Um, to, to be very, very lenient, and I would suggest probation, maybe, or something less, so that he yeah, can go he's on not going to the process of running, um, you know, his his Republican conference, decide if he's going to be, and who his vice president's going to be, and setting up for the election just months away at that point, and let and as as many have said on both sides of the party, let the people decide this situation on November fifth. Right. If they make Trump president again, then, then we're talking about the Oval Office. We want to be careful not to get in his way as he governs the, the land. I would have thought bringing the porn star case after the election would have been no, better. It's no, good. It was really unusual to listen. And I was in London, where you are. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. We're going to have the same scenario they have in Israel. Netanyahu has a case of bribery and corruption. He will go to jail. So as long as he's prime minister, they can't put him in jail. So he knows he has to stay the prime minister of Israel. He will kill every Palestinian and every Israeli and destroy both his country just to stay prime minister. We can have the same thing with Donald Trump because some of the cases are going to be, they're going to stop when he finishes his presidency. So then you're going to have a problem. Maybe he'll start wars and shit just to avoid fucking leaving the office. They should fuck it. That's the dangerous part. And remember these words. That's what's going to happen. We're going to have the Netanyahu scenario. Um, talking to uh, sovereign wealth and institutional investors, I'm, as you know, I'm trying to buy TikTok, so I'm trying to line up a syndicate. And, and Stormy Daniels' testimony... Uh... If he buys fucking TikTok, TikTok is fucking over. Right now, TikTok doesn't have any gatekeeper. When, once this fucking douchebag owns it and his people, it will just become another app where you can't say anything, you can't do anything, as long as the Zionists tell you to do what you what they want and you will do it. That's it was it. embarrassing. Talking about condoms and penis size mm -hmm. and what, what does that have to do with state finance or, right. or, or federal finance law? It has nothing. It, it, it was really trashy and... and, and not at the level you would want to brand a, a G7 right. or G20 country. And I, and I think most people are embarrassed about it, to be honest. I, I agree with you. And talking of TikTok, Trump joined it, uh, Francesco, at the weekend. He got 3 million followers immediately. Um, but also, this happened at the UFC fight. Dana White let him out. And this is just after he'd been convicted of, of 34 counts of, of this uh, crime. Take a look at what the crowd reacted. Pretty cool for Sean Strickland to have a moment there with Donald Trump after a win. 
President Trump, you're the man, bro. It is a damn travesty what they're doing to you. I'll be donating to you, my man. Let's get it done. I mean, by that the way, follow, that yeah, I want to give you my money, you rich man. Way, I'm going to donate the money I just got beat up for and give it to you, you, you filthy rich billionaire. What a fucking idiot. If uh, I have spent the last two days having people talk to me at a conference I'm at, telling me that the, one of the phenomenons on TikTok, as Kevin invoked it, is people saying, I'm voting for the felon, I'm voting for yeah. the felon. Yeah. I'm telling you, this. Be, be, you want a poll? I'll give you a poll. Take a look at what's happening there at the UFC fight and take a look at what's happening on TikTok. Yeah. I mean, we're watching the end. This is when he came in. I mean, the place went completely nuts. And this, the trouble is, Francesca, I spent a lot of time in New York and L.A. I have a place in L.A. and spent a lot of time working in New York. But I also do a lot of crime documentaries, ironically, which take me down to rural Florida, rural Texas, Alabama, places all like right. that. You're and let, to me tell you, let me tell you, none of them agree with you. They all agree with that crowd at the UFC. And if I was a Democrat, I'd be quite unnerved that you've thrown the kitchen sink at this guy, and this is how a lot of the public are reacting. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it makes sense that he'd be cheered at UFC. I mean, you know, they, it's, it's, a, it's a sport full of actors, and we have this uh, guy who's been pretending to be a serious politician for years now. Look, the well, they're important not actors thing about in, that interview sorry, that he gave Fox on, News... Sorry, hang on, hang on. You're not besmirching the important UFC. Thing about hang the Fox on, News... hang on, fact check. You'll think you're WWE. The actors, the UFC, they're real fighters. Uh, uh, yes. I'm oh, sorry. I'm. I don't have. Cool. Good. I'm glad. Look. There's a I big difference. One is acting. Ameri- one is hardcore elite fighting. They're very different things. Oh, smirmish. I don't have video feed, but I bet it's dope. And I and I and I stand corrected, Piers. But I will <laughs> say this: with the interview that he gave um, on Fox and Friends, I do think it matters because what he said was the American people aren't going to stand for this. And in some ways, he's saying, you know, he's warning Judge Mershon. And I sort of agree that I don't think Judge Mershon, even though all you have, they're not going to put him in jail. Sadly for me, I hope they give him some sort of like community service soup kitchen situation. I'd love to see that whatever is on his head in a hairnet. That'd be incredible. Or just like make him work one day in his life, just a single day, maybe on minimum wage. I'd like to see what you do at like a Home Depot, you know, or just like do a landscaping job from one of the many immigrants that you want to deport from this country, anything. That would be uh, more of a punishment than actually sitting in a jail cell. But what he was really (laughs) saying is, hey, American people, basically stand up for me. In effect, do another January 6th for me. And we all saw what happened, no matter what you think of that day, which I'll remind you, so many Republicans distanced themselves from what happened that day. But the other thing that happened is all these folks who loved Trump, who followed him, who believed in him, were arrested and then charged, rightfully so, for trespassing, for rioting, for for threatening the lives of Congress people. And Trump has fa- faced absolutely no music over that. And and of course, well, of course he has. He's, hang on, hang way, on. She might, he hang might on. never of course actually he has. He's been charged until he's been, after the election. He's been charged with very serious crimes in relation to that. It just won't, that won't happen before the election. Instead, the Democrats, collectively, he for also, political reasons and legal reasons and back. so on, came up with the mad idea of going first with the Stormy case. And that has been a total disaster because no one takes it seriously. All right, fuck off, man. We all agree that Donald Trump should not have been put on trial for that bullshit charge of fucking having sex with a porno star, whatever. Okay, we have one more thing before we go. Our brother in arms, Tim Pool, the guy who's been predicting a civil war for the last... When Donald hey, Trump gets elected... Here he is. Now, I can tell you 100% that Tim Pool is a pussy. He would not even be able to fight his own shadow. He lives in a complex, a big complex in West Virginia. He probably has a lot of fucking guns because he wants to feel good about himself. Guns that he probably doesn't even know how to use. He has a lot of food, drinking water. And he's always predicting a civil war. I don't know what the fuck with this guy in the civil war. I'll put it this way. Should Democrats be in jail? No question. When Donald Trump gets elected, should he start locking them up? No question. Should there be lists of Democrats that need to go to jail? 100%. And the reason for that is they, they've committed crimes. We need to make sure that when Donald Trump wins, we've got 
an attorney general, a deputy attorney general, a head of the CIA and the FBI. Uh, Cash Patel would be fantastic. We can have attorney general. There are some names floating around. And then they can start uh, having their investigators and, and the feds issuing subpoenas, pulling up evidence, and with real evidence, bring them to judges for warrants. Then these people can spend three, three years of their lives fighting tooth and nail for the crime against the, uh, the government for crimes they committed. All right. We agree with you. I agree with you. Anybody who breaks the law, Democrat, Republican, independent, asshole, or gay, straight, whatever the fuck they are, they should be held responsible. I agree with you 100%, but we should not be like, well, we should get all the Democrats because they're Republicans. Eh? Stop being tribal. Don't be tribal. Don't be and tribal. we can prove. Yeah. And the reason why we put them on trial is that we can show the whole world we will uncover what you've done. We will make sure everyone knows and you will be held accountable for okay. it. Why is this crazy? Jail, they should get the death penalty. You know, we actually used to have the punishment for treason in this country. This is Lara Luma. When she said this, they went offline because he got scared they might take away his line. She went fucking nuts. He just shut off the whole show. In this country.